Good afternoon and welcome to Condo Insider. My name is Jane Sugimura and I'm your uh, host for the, uh, today's show. And today's, and, and my guest today is Raylene Tenno, who is the Programs Director for Hawaii Council of Association of Apartment Owners, DBA HCCA. Hi, Raylene. Hi, <laughs> thank okay. you for having me here. Thank you for being with us again. Anyway, what we're here to do today is we're gonna be talking about legislation that affects condominiums. And uh, what we're gonna talk about is how condo owners or anybody who's interested can participate because it's really, really easy. And there are some bills that we really need your support. And you know, you can do this online uh, with any type of uh, device. You could probably even do it on your phone if your eyesight is good enough. I mean, because everything is very small. But anyway, uh, we have some uh, slides that, I, that uh, we're gonna show you, but the, the uh, website address is capital C-A-P-I-T-A-L dot Hawaii dot gov or Raylene, you say you go to E, E, E. I go to, I go to e, e Hawaii dot gov. Okay. And it takes but either you way, to... it, it, it gets you to this page. The one you see right. on your screen right now, it gets you to this page. And the important thing is, is the first box on the top, it says bill status, measure status. And what you do is whatever bill you're you're interested in, this is where you type it in. If it's a house bill, it's HB 1234. <clears throat> or if it's a Senate bill, it's SB as in S as in Sam, B as in boy, uh, five, six, seven, eight. But it's a four digit number after HB or SB. And, th and what, what this does, if you, uh, once you put it in and you click uh, the go button, it will take you to the bill. But if you want to testify, you hit the first icon and the first icon says submit testimony. And then it takes you to this page, the login page. Okay, and now you're on the login page and what you have to do is you put in your email address. So the first box you put in your email address and then you put, make up a password and put in the password. And so this is, and, and every time you want to do testimony, you have to do this. You have to put in your, uh, your uh, email address and your password, and then you click uh, login, and then it will take you to the next page, okay? And this page is the, the, the it tells you uh, what you're supposed to do. And then, so you, you see the icon, the first one, it says submit testimony. The first icon on your left on the front row that's the one you hit. And then it will take you to the page where you can uh, put your testimony. And what you wanna do is you look at the box that says it, it, enter bill or measure. And so this is where you enter whatever bill you wanna testify on, HB1234 or SB4567. You put in the uh, bill number. And then once you put it in, the uh, page will transform and it will ask you certain questions. It will ask you uh, to uh, type in your, uh, your um, email address and it will ask you if you, because then it, it, uh, since you've registered, it, has, it will, uh, it will uh, transfer your name to the legislators. And then you, it asks you whether you, uh, uh, you agree or you disagree with the bill? Do you support or do you oppose the bill? Or do you just want to comment? So you just check one of the boxes. And then the next uh, next uh, box will ask you, do you want to, are you going to attend in person or, uh, or not? So you don't even have to attend, but this way your testimony gets into the legislature. And then so if you're not going to attend, you can just sit, send, I will not attend. And then it will ask you, is this testimony for yourself? testifying as an individual or are you testifying for a group? So if you're testifying for your association, so if your association is the Marco Polo, you would say AOAO Marco Polo is who you're testifying for. And then there'll be a box at the bottom and you can type in your testimony. I support this bill because, uh, this bill sucks because it's, it does this and that. Or I would support this bill if it did this and that. So you can put uh, your comments in there and then in the bottom it will say submit. Once you hit the submit button, 
your testimony goes and 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 it, and when the legislators are in a hearing they all have laptops and so your testimony is going to show up on their screen when the hearing appears and so and you know that the legislature has your testimony because on the left hand side uh you will see uh you know something that says it, it has there's a box that says measure and the hearing and so it, if, if you did testimony for house bill one two three four in the middle will have the date of the hearing and the room number and if you want to see what test to, to, to see if your testimony was transmitted the way you typed it you hit view and you will be able to view your own testimony that you just submitted so this means that you can participate in a legislative hearing for whatever bills that are pending before the legislature you don't have to go to the hearing and you can do it over the internet and and, and you know while we were talking you know, I, you could have uh, done your testimony and submitted it, and you don't even have to go to the hearing. And you can do this for any bill that is pending before the legislature. And, uh, and, and um, so, you know, this is a, a, a very uh, good thing to know about. And especially since, you know, uh, the Hawaii Council is going to be seeking your assistance, you know, in some of these measures. And next, I'm going to be talking about the measures that are pending this year okay and so the first one on our list is a bill called and and you have to you know know what the bill numbers are uh, because that's the way they identify them in the legislature so this is house bill 2161 because all the bills most of the bills relating to condos their titles are in ray condominium so that's why you have to know the bill numbers okay so house bill 2161 it does a bunch of things, uh, but the thing, the, the two issues that you know seem to be contentious. There's a provision in uh, in 514B in the condo statute uh, that talks about who can serve on the board. And uh, about three years ago, there was a change in the statute that said that made it real clear that tenants uh, of somebody who's an owner cannot serve on the board. And and so, but uh, this year they're seeking clarification of who is a tenant. And, and, and so um, that, that language, and, and there was a hearing yesterday, so we don't know what the legislature is going to do, uh, but you know, they're, they're, they, so they're, we need to do clarification of the language in the statute. Uh, and one thing happened, <coughs> what happened, I guess, you know, that is, uh, is um, kind of, pushing the change is this this last year after the law was changed uh there was a condominium where i think the wife uh husband and wife the wife is the owner of an llc and the husband decided he wanted to run for the board and the board of directors took him to court and they 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 filed a tro to say you can't run uh, and what happened you know before the law the tro was filed i think is the wife made the husband a member of the LLC and those of you who know what an LLC is that a member is an owner and and the judge in that case you know didn't make a ruling but he did say that he was inclined to grant the TRO because you have only two members uh, I mean two members husband and wife and and they rented the unit from the LLC who was the owner and so he kind of he, he says you know i'm inclined to to grant the tro because the husband should be allowed to serve on the board and and because there was no ruling on that issue uh some uh, people think you know thought it was better to amend the statute so that's what that change is all about and the second issue in 20 house bill 2161 uh deals with these um if uh, letters that have to be submitted uh, to the association if you want to run uh, for the board of directors. And uh, the statute says if you want to run, you have to submit these 100-word statements uh, to the board. And in some condominiums, some asso associations where things are, you know, disputed all the time and there are fights, and, and, and all of us know of buildings that, you know, have contentious, uh, you know, dealings between owners and their boards and with board members and their uh, other board members but you know in some instances uh, we've heard stories 
that these 100-word statements contain really defamatory statements, things like, you know, I want to run for president because the pr current president is a deadbeat dad and he, and he steals money. And, and, and so when the, the re, when the managing agents like Hawaiiana, Touchstone, Associa get these hundred word statements, they have to send it out to the owners. I mean, that's what the statute says. And so when that happens, you know, there have been threats of lawsuits for defamation because the association, the management, managing director or the board members published, published this defamatory statement. And so the statute right now has language that says that the board is not going to be liable if they do this. And there have been a lot of concerns that, you know, that's the wrong approach. I mean, you shouldn't be trying to relieve people of liability uh, for, you know, something, something like that. And so the suggestion was, has been made to change the statute to say that you do these hundred word statements provided that and the new language would be that you don't mention a third party by name or by reference. And then, you know, you have this legislator who says, well, why should we amend the statute? That makes common sense. Why doesn't the board, if the board, if this is something that makes the board upset or the managing agents upset, then why don't they just pass a motion or pass a resolution and say, you can't do this? Raylene, you have any comments on that? I mean, why would a well, board want to do, I mean, why, what, what, what reason would a board have for wanting to do this? Because it sets the ground rules and it's, it sets the ground rules by statute. So it's even across the board for everybody. Um, I mean, you don't want a derogatory statement about a person um, being sent out and blasted all over the place. I mean, that opens up the board. It opens up the managing agent for a major lawsuit. Um, so putting it in statute creates that language that, um, sets the, the procedure on what can and cannot be included in some of those statements. But what about, you know, the question about well, then what if the board, I mean, the board can pass resolutions, they should make a rule. You can't do this. You can't put, you know, uh, say derogatory things in the hundred word statement. What's wrong with doing something like that? Um, I don't think there's any, for me, I don't think there's anything wrong. I mean, I, I, if we solicited proxies, if the notice was out, sent out properly and they put the rules in place, like when we get our packets, there's always the rules. Um, even, uh, the annual, when the day of the annual meeting, there's actually, um, in that packet, there's a rules to follow, um, during that annual meeting, um, what you can and cannot do, um, essentially being polite, like don't interrupt be, put with someone when they're talking, things of that nature. Um, so it could be like in the, in the packet of the annual meeting, it could be part of the rules. Like if you're going to use a hundred word statement, there's no defamatory remarks um, to, to imply a defamation of character. It needs to be done um, properly. And, um, but you know, the concern with most boards is if they do that, and we all know, with 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 the and owners, we, you know, owners are very sophisticated. The first thing you're going to get is you're going to get somebody, some owner saying, "Hey, you can't do that. I got a First Amendment right. I can write whatever I want to in my hundred word statement, and you, the board, cannot censor me. And I'm going to take you to court because you're censoring me." So, so the boards are kind of in a catch, can, you know, catch twenty two situation. They're damned if they do, and they damned if they don't. They don't. That's true. And, you know, uh, sometimes some things that come to mind is like, well, would you want your, all your, if you're a delinquent, would you want that exposed to everybody and let everybody know that you're delinquent? You know, it's a lot of times that's a reason for delinquencies to be held only in um, executive session. You know, it's kind of a, to me, it's kind of the same principle, you know? Right. Um, but, but, you know, something like this, I mean, and so I guess that's why, you know, the, the, the suggestion was we, we got to go in and change the law rather than let the boards, you know, deal with it by themselves, because it, it's clear that they haven't dealt with it by themselves. Right. And there have been claims, uh, you know, brought against uh, boards and managing agents for defamation. But right now, you know, we're going to take a one minute break and we're going to come back and talk about some of the other legislation that we're going to be dealing with this session.
Aloha, y'all. My name is Mitch Ewan. I'm from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, and I'm the host of Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy. We're on every Wednesday at 4 o'clock, and we hope that we have interesting uh, guests who talk to us about various energy things that are happening in Hawaii, all the way from PV to windmills to hydrogen, close to my heart, electric buses and electric vehicles. So please dial in every Wednesday at 4 o'clock on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha. Okay, welcome back to another, uh, to the second part of uh, Condo Insider. And we're here talking about uh, condo legislation and how you can participate. And we, you know, you really can and should participate. It's really easy. You can do it like on any device. Uh, you would go to uh, Capital with an A C A P A T A L dot Hawaii dot gov, and it will take you to a page where all you have to do is put in your bill number, and you can uh, and 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 click an icon that says testify, and you can uh, testify on any bill that you want without ever appearing at the legislature without preparing written testimony, and uh, it's a way for you to participate uh, in the, uh, the enactment of laws that affect your uh, living in condominiums. Okay, we're gonna go now to House Bill 2562, and this deals with a whole bunch of stuff, but one thing that it does deal with, it clarifies how a board member can resign, and you may think uh, that this is not significant, but there are, we have heard stories about people who, who, who volunteer to be on the board of directors and when they decide, you know, they don't want to participate anymore, they resign and then they're told, oh no, you can't resign unless we approve. And, and so this clarifies the fact that if you want to resign, no, you don't need anybody to approve it. You write the board a letter or you, in a board meeting, you say, I resign, you want it on the minutes and everybody's in the room and that's the end of it. Okay, so, so, so that's House Bill 2562. And now we're and gonna also get, with, yeah? Also with that clarification, because you resigned, you can't change your mind later. Right. So, oh no, I was upset at the time. I didn't yeah. resign. Right. So that and, was kind of part of the intention. Yeah, and that's, <clears throat> that's, that's part of, you know, to make it clear that, you know, there's a way to resign and 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 there aren't you don't need anybody's permission to resign but you have to, when you do resign you do it by letter and you do it, or you do it in a board meeting with everybody present and that's it and you can't take it back once you resign you have resigned and so now we're going to uh senate bill 2200 and this is about um uh emotional support animals and many condos have uh, uh, no pet provisions. And these are con uh, provisions that uh, were usually there because 67% uh, of the ownership at some time uh, decided they didn't want pets in the building. And, there may, and there's a reason for this. Uh, and, and, there's a, and the reason why this is important is when people buy into a condominium, whether or not they allow pets, you know, affects their decision. What if you're allergic to animals? Or what if, what if you're afraid of dogs? Uh, and some people just don't want to live in a building where cats and dogs live, you know, because they don't like the, the dander or, you know, they just don't want to put up with animals. And, the, and so, so if they look at, and one of the things you do when you buy into a condo, you look at their declarations and their house rules. And if it's a no pets building, it says so in their declarations, in their bylaws, in their house rules and then they right. buy into it. And then uh, under the uh, Americans for Disabilities Act, uh, the, uh, and that's a federal law, it says that we're for um, service animals. And these are animals that are specially trained to help people with disabilities. And in, in, in a condominium, the uh, association has to relax its no pet rules. In other words, you have to allow a service animal. And, and I don't think, you know, and, and, and this bill does not affect service animals. If it affects those other animals that are called emotional support animals. And uh, right now the procedure is if you want to, if, if you want to live in a building that doesn't allow for pets, 
and you have to go to a licensed professional, a doctor or a social worker or a psychologist or a psychiatrist, and get a letter from that a licensed professional that says that you have a disability recognized by the Americans with Disabilities Act and that you need an emotional support animal to live in your unit because that animal helps to relieve some of the uh, symptoms of a disability that you have. And that letter goes to the board of directors and the board has no uh, choice but to allow the pet or the animal to move into the building. And what this bill addresses is what we think is an abuse. And we've heard it from lots of buildings where people go and they come with letters where the doctor has never seen the recipient. And we know that these, these I mean, it's just very clear to the people who live in the, in the buildings that there is no disability. And they think it's, this is a sham and you end up with all these animals living in a no pets building. And you have owners who say, you know, owners who say that, you know, I bought into this building because it's a no pets building and I'm allergic to, to dogs. And, and now I have three dogs living next door to me. And, you know, so this isn't fair. And, and so, uh, so what this bill does is it's, it, it says that the Hawaii licensed professional has to actually see the person and has to determine that that person has a disability recognized by the ADA and that the person has to have an emotional support animal to relieve some of the symptoms of the disability. And, uh, and, they, they, and they sign the letter. So that means that you actually, they, the recipient of the letter has to actually go and see the doctor, actually be examined. The doctor has to make findings and before he signs the letter. And what, we're, what our group is gonna do when we go to, to the legislature is to ask for sanctions to the licensed professional who disregards uh, what this bill says and just signs this letter because the person is his next door neighbor or the person is the, the, the daughter of the best friend or for some reason has nothing to do, do with whether or not that person is disabled. And, and Raylene, what are you hearing from the community about this bill? Well, I know in January, Department of Transportation issued out, um, it came out in the news, and um, I just re recently saw the article where they're putting a halt on these pet issues, um, therapy pets, comfort animals, riding in the passenger cabins. So they're, they're setting up- In airplanes. Um, yeah, in airplanes. So they're setting up guidelines um, from the Federal Department of Transportation on what really can be in the cabin um, and the requirements. Um, but other than that, your therapy peacock has to be in the baggage compartment um, and all that, you know? So it's gonna come down and I have a feeling all the other um, agencies will follow. They'll use that as a guide. More, than, more likely we'll have that as a guide to follow. Right, and under this bill, yeah, under this bill, the uh, Civil Rights Commission, which is a big advocate of emotional support animals, and they're the ones who are beating up on the condominiums. Uh, so th I, I, we expect the, the Civil Rights Commission to, to oppose this bill. So this is why we need your help if you're listening out there or you see this uh, uh, video, that you need to uh, contact your legislator and say that you want Senate Bill 2200 passed out. And, and we need all, everybody to participate. And the more people we get to participate online, the chances of our, you know, getting this passed is gonna be good. Right, and, and now there's another bill that I've been getting a lot of emails on, and this is about Greece. This is Senate Bill what is this Senate bill? 2817. 2817. And, and I, I don't know why this, what the reason for this is, but this is the one where they're going to make high rise condominiums put in receptacles so that people don't put grease down the drain in their sinks. And uh, when we talked about it at our last meeting, there were a lot of comments on this one. Yep, we did. Um, 
everybody had, I mean, because number one, you put grease down your your um, your sink, it will it'll cool off, and then it also affect the plumbing for the unit on the opposite side. Because usually kitchens are back to back, bathrooms are back to back on on construction, and um, it'll affect the other unit over time. It also affects your dishwasher if you have a dishwasher. Um, affects your P-trap because if you pour hot grease, um, some of those P-traps are now kind of evolving into more of a plastic, and it could just melt it. So you're really doing a lot of damage that you don't realize that you're doing. Um, for me, I just save um, the cardboard egg cartons. Um, and then when I have a lot of grease, I'm usually just pouring the grease in there and the, and the, the, the paper gets, all the oil gets absorbed into the paper and then I throw it out in the trash. Um, but you know, somebody at the meeting the other day was saying that there are products that will yes. solidify this oil. Right? right, and they they were available at BIA, and, and in fact, you said we're going to have a a seminar next week Thursday, and we're going to get some information and probably circulate that to uh, the people who are at our seminar about you yes. know telling their buildings that you know these products are available because yes. this bill is 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 just terrible. I mean, nobody. It is because you you take yeah. the risk of someone carrying oil down into wherever this receptacle is going to be placed. They could drop it accidentally. Um, and heaven forbid they don't have a set of stairs. Yeah, it's a huge, huge, huge um, issue. Um, and somebody was saying, did anybody bother to check with the fire department to see if you know this is going to fly? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it'll bring it'll bring bugs. It'll bring pests. You know. Yeah. Wherever this this grease receptacle is, it you know the, the it will draw all the the the, the cockroaches and whatever and. Yeah. Um, and that's the the last thing we need in a high rise. Yep. Right. Great. And 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 so anyway, the bill and the, the bad thing is is the bill has passed two committees. So it's gonna cross over. This is a, a Senate bill. I mean, so it's crossed, I mean it, it passed out of two two committees. So it's gonna cross over to the House and and then so so we're gonna have to deal with it when you know when it comes up for hearing. So this is another one. To, to tell your neighbors about, if you don't want to pay for a receptacle in your building to collect grease, then this is a, a bill. It's Senate bill, what is it, 2817? 2817, and what I'll, when, we, when I, as soon as I find the information of, about the um, res, the other portable things to put it in and throw it out, um, I'll have it posted on hawaiicouncil.org on our website. Okay, thank you, Raylene, for being my guest today. And thank you for uh, joining us for another episode of Condo Insider. And please go to capital.hawaii.gov or ehawaii.gov and check it out and uh, participate in the legislative process. Thank you very much.